With cold air from Canada moving towards us, temperatures are dropping to their lowest point of the season. We'll tell you just how cold it's going to be as you head out the door. There may be more wolves in Washington state than we originally thought. University of Washington researchers are getting to the bottom of it. A Washington mother says she wants to send a warning to all parents with young children. This comes after her daughter almost drowned in the family pool. Five a.m. on our Monday morning. Welcome to Creme Two Morning News. I'm Jen York and I'm Brittany Bailey. Well, we first want to check on the road conditions in our region. We want to give you a look at what the roads look like last night in Coeur d'Alene. Take a look here. We saw some flurries in the area that made for some slick spots here and there. Definitely a different scene in Coeur d'Alene, by the way, than some of the Spokane area regions. So be aware of that this morning. The National Weather Service is reporting slippery roads on Interstate 90 near Coeur d'Alene. The agency tweeted, stay alert, slow down, stay in control. Well, for more on how our forecast is shaping up this morning, we will send things over to Evan Arani in the Weather Center now. He's keeping tabs on all of this for us. Yeah, our morning with a lot of cold temperatures around the northwest, colder than we've really seen them so far this season. So one thing that I want to point out is what those temperatures are like when you factor in the wind chill. Take a look at what we've got as far as those feels like temperatures outside 13 below in OMAC, two below in Coeur d'Alene and three below in Sandpoint. We're at nine degrees in Spokane and eight in Moses Lake. Again, when you look at these temperatures at face value, they're in the 20s, in the teens, some single digits. But when you factor in the amount of wind that we have, it makes these temperatures feel so much colder. And that is why you should carry that jacket with you. Satellite radar is showing that uh, we still have a little bit of snow activity up toward that northeast corner of Washington and the southeast corner as well. Uh, the central and southern panhandle still seeing a good amount of that snow activity, but it kind of just left Spokane alone most of last night. We did see a little bit of that dusting in Coeur d'Alene like you saw earlier, uh, but aside from that, south of Coeur d'Alene was where uh, the brunt of that activity was. Now, as the day goes on, we still carry about a 20% chance of those showers remaining through about the noon hour, uh, but otherwise we're looking at mostly cloudy skies as the day goes on. Temperatures are going to be pretty chilly in the afternoon, though. We will be in likely the mid-20s as the warmest temperatures of the day. Uh, 25 in Spokane and uh, Bonners Ferry is looking at an afternoon high today of 16 degrees, so a chilly day outside. We do want to get a check of the driving conditions outside with Creme 2's Kara L. Fallen. She starts off our morning in the mobile storm tracker driving around the area. Kara, I will throw things over to you. Yes, good morning, Evan. Well, if you were expecting to wake up in Spokane and see snow this morning, then you're not seeing much at all on the road. So roads are looking pretty good in Spokane. Here at Post Falls, it's a little bit of a different story. They got a light layer of snow on the roads here um, in North Idaho, especially here in Post Falls, and it is a little bit slick out here this morning. So um, for those of you who are going to be making your commute this morning, just know if you live in Post Falls, things are going to be a little bit slick this morning as you head out. So be sure to give yourself extra time. It's also pretty cold out here this morning and with the wind chill you really want to button up as you leave your house this morning and make your way to work or to school or wherever you might be going but so far roads not looking too bad out here in Post Falls we will head over to Coeur d'Alene though and see how things are looking out there for now I'm going to send it over to Amber who has a check on your traffic. Kiara, good morning. Well, we're taking a look outside at the roadways in our area in Spokane, and it's a little different than what you just showed us in Post Falls. So if you do live in Spokane and your morning commute takes you to that area, you should be good to go. Uh, as far as weather conditions go, we are seeing dry conditions on the roadways uh, and uh, clear conditions as far as uh, any delays or congestion. So uh, you should be in good shape right now, but I will keep an eye out in case any uh, delays do start to form. Brittany, Jen, I'll go ahead and send it back to you. Amber, thank you. 503 now. A Washington baker who created and sold a controversial cookie says he is unapologizing for what he did. Last week, we heard from Ken Bellingham, the owner of Edmonds Bakery. He sold a cookie with Build the Wall written on it. After getting some backlash, he initially apologized, but now he says he's taking it back. He says he is now selling the cookies by the dozen. Last week, Bellingham said he would not make any more cookies with political statements on them, but then he changed his mind and said he was protected by the First Amendment. That is according to a Seattle television station. He said on the bakery's Facebook page that he was getting many requests to have them shipped. Bellingham said he does support border security, but would not go as far as to say he supported a wall. In the end, he said his decision to sell the Build the Wall cookies was a business decision rather than a political one. 
Well, the number of wolves in Washington state is likely much higher than first thought. That is according to the University of Washington. Researchers spent two years studying the animals using scat sniffing dogs. The dogs detected 95 wolves in one area of Stevens and Ponderay counties. That was between 2016 and 2017. One year ago, the State Department of Fish and Wildlife estimated that Washington had a minimum of 122 wolves in at least 22 packs. Researchers at the UW now estimate the number is closer to 200 wolves in Washington state. State wolf managers said they estimate an average population growth of 30% per year. Now, keeping track of how many wolves roam the state is important. That is because it determines whether wolves are considered a protected species under state and federal law. A Tacoma family has a warning to share along with a message of hope. This comes after a serious accident last Mother's Day. Last year, Regina Lloyd's two-year-old daughter nearly drowned in the family's swimming pool, and the lack of oxygen from the accident damaged her brain. It happened when two-year-old legend wandered off when she was supposed to be watching a movie with her sisters. Her mom said her stomach dropped when she heard the news. I jet towards the pool and I hop, jump in there. Um, and I get about three quarters of the pool when my, my foot touches something and I just knew it was her and I just lifted her up out of the water and handed her over to the police. Well, she had been underwater for at least 20 minutes. At the hospital, doctors said she would be lucky if she survived the next 24 hours. Her family decided to try special treatments, a hyperbaric chamber and stem cell transplants, and her progress has surprised doctors. Legend is still recovering, but her mother says she wants to share a message. Any water source that you might, you know, not th give a second thought about, be careful with it because your little ones are very curious. And definitely her name gives us hope, you know. Her name is the legend, and a lot of people say she was a lame legend by accident. Um, she's going to make a full recovery, and she's going to be proving a lot of people wrong. Insurance does not cover some of the special therapies that have helped legend. Community donations from friends, the church, and her father's employer have made them possible. In October, the city of Spokane launched a campaign to encourage people and businesses in Seattle to relocate to Spokane. The campaign promoted Spokane's affordable housing and shorter commute times, among other things. Krem 2's Amanda Roldy has an update this morning on how the campaign is going and which businesses have already made the move. The Hacking Washington campaign is part of the city's plans to stimulate economic growth. The city hopes Seattle businesses will consider Spokane for a second headquarters and as a result entice Spokane natives to return home. Spokane is thriving. Developers are breathing new life into old buildings. The iconic Riverfront Park is undergoing a major facelift and the housing market is becoming more and more competitive. The Hacking Washington campaign highlights all of these features and more. So far, it's caught the attention of two Seattle-based companies. Rover is a dog-sitting startup. The company was already looking for a city to establish its second headquarters, and it found Spokane to be a right fit because it prioritizes multimodal transit, has a great urban culture, and lots of green space for Rover's two- and four-legged teammates. It will soon settle into its new offices at the Wonder Building once renovations are complete. The second is McKinstry, a construction engineering company. It moved here from Seattle several years ago, but the city marks the company as a positive response to the campaign because it's now helping lead another investment of over $100 million in the university district area. Julie Happy and Shauna Harshman with the City of Spokane oversee the campaign and the city's economic development. They found that many Seattle businesses didn't know Spokane's downtown is as thriving as it is, or the manufacturing Spokane has in the aerospace field, along with the growing tech community. So the campaign has really helped Spokane shake off its old look and make Seattle businesses aware of the new opportunities it can offer. The campaign is expected to continue through the end of 2019, and the city says it may even look at targeting other major cities like Boise in a similar campaign. Amanda Roldy, Krem 2 News.
509 now. More U.S. service members are heading to the U.S.-Mexico border. Pentagon leaders made that announcement yesterday. Around 3,700 more U.S. military members will be deployed. They will provide support to Customs and Border Protection. That will bring the number of total active duty forces at the border to around 4,300. These additional units are being deployed for 90 days. President Trump talked about border security in an interview on Face the Nation. Republican and Democratic leaders have fewer than two weeks to come up with a deal. That is to avoid another government shutdown. The president said in the interview he might try to bypass Congress if the negotiators cannot reach a deal. Would you shut down the government again? Well, we're going to have to see what happens on February 15th. And You're not taking I, it off I think, the table. Well, I don't, I don't take anything off the table. I don't like to take things off the table. A 17-member bipartisan conference committee is working on that deal on border security funding. Last week, President Trump called those negotiations a waste of time. The State of the Union is set for tomorrow. That is after a delay because of the partial government shutdown. White House leaders say the president is not expected to dwell on the shutdown or on the deadline. Instead, he's expected to focus on areas of potential bipartisan compromise. Former candidate for Georgia's governor, Stacey Abrams, will give a Democratic response to the president's address. The response is always done by the party not occupying the White House. You can watch the State of the Union address here on CREM 2 at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Now it is 5.11 a.m. on this Monday. Well, did you miss the Super Bowl? If so, we'll have a recap of the game and some of the fun moments. And one of those moments was, of course, the halftime show. Get out your phones and tablets now because we want to hear your opinions on last night's performances. And we've still got a little bit of a chance of snow in the forecast. We're going to be uh, talking about chilly temperatures and that possible chance of precipitation later on in the week.